Wow. SpaceX's Starship launch date is very close. We'll hold our breath until Friday, November 17. The upcoming flight will be much more exciting than before as Ship 25 is expected to return. Ideally, the flight will go into space and reach full duration, a 90-minute trip worldwide ending with a re-entry and splashdown of the Starship's upper stage in the Pacific Ocean northwest of Hawaii. This is an important milestone for the company because, before the launch on April 20, Elon Musk only considered a successful test flight to mean that the rocket did not explode on the launch pad. However, in fact, that also puts some challenges. You know, launching a rocket into orbit is challenging, but bringing it back safely to Earth is more difficult. So, how SpaceX's Starship will survive re-entry? Can it be safe? Discuss everything about this in today's episode of TechMap. It can be said that not only for Starship, but also for the general rocket, spacecraft re-entry is a tricky business for several reasons. When an object enters the Earth's atmosphere, it experiences a few forces, including gravity and drag. Gravity will naturally pull an object back to Earth. By contrast, drag which is caused by air friction will slow down the object to a safer entry speed. However, this friction causes not only drag, but also immense heat, capable of turning any unprotected spacecraft into a giant fireball. This is the biggest challenge SpaceX has faced since in low Earth orbit. Starship will be traveling no less than 7.8 kilometers per second. It means the drag effect on its body is extremely high, thus can heat the vehicle quickly. So, the goal here is to slow down the vehicle gradually to reduce peak temperatures. The spacecraft will continue the SpaceX tradition of vertical landing, falling straight down, a bit like a skydiver or a brick on its belly. This maneuver is also called normally a belly flop. When just 500 meters above the ground, two to three engines will operate again, and the rear flaps will fold in, flip upright again, and the vehicle will perform a controlled landing. This maneuver has never been tried before by the space industry and is extremely difficult to execute, but the belly flop maneuver is surprisingly a safe and effective way to return the vehicle to Earth to be used again. The logic behind the action is relatively simple. An object falling from space will accelerate due to the Earth's gravity until it reaches its terminal velocity where the downward force from gravity balances the force upward from air resistance. The larger the air resistance, the lower the terminal velocity as the object will accelerate less before the forces balance. By belly flopping Starship increases its bottom surface area from 70 square meters to 545 square meters, significantly reducing the vehicle's terminal velocity. This reduces the fuel and peak deceleration required to bring the vehicle to a stop. It will be traveling slower and reduces the maximum heat experienced by the vehicle due to friction. However, using the belly flop method is not enough. SpaceX also added some features on Starship to ensure that the spacecraft can survive numerous orbital velocity re-entries with little to no wear and tear. First, when looking at Starship, what impresses you the most? It could be its size or four flaps on both sides, but for me, it's about the color. Indeed, SpaceX's Starship spacecraft has a main color of silver black instead of the usual white, like the others. Of course, SpaceX's dominant purpose is not to use color to mark its pet. The silver color comes from a type of non-corrosive alloy called 300 series stainless steel. It's the first time someone has made a rocket from this material since the 1950s. The reason why most rocket companies avoid steel is because it's heavy and the heavier your actual rocket, the less payload you can carry to space on the same fuel tanks. Instead, the outer frame of most rockets is built of durable but lightweight metals like aluminum and titanium. Titanium is great for keeping a rocket lightweight, but it can cost up to 15 to 20 times more than steel. According to material science experts, steel works better in extreme temperature conditions than titanium. That means both under extreme heat, like during launch and atmospheric re-entry, but also extreme cold, like in deep space. Most notably, stainless steel increases its durability at these cryogenic temperatures, making it ideal for deep space travel. Besides, when falling, the Starship's belly is the place most exposed to air resistance, so that area must be covered with a black heat shield layer. As part of the thermal protection system, 
the heat shield is composed of thousands of hexagonal black tiles that can withstand temperatures of 1400 degrees Celsius or 2552 degrees Fahrenheit. A series of heat-resistant hexagonal tiles made of silica intended to protect the spacecraft from scorching temperatures as it re-enters Earth's atmosphere. SpaceX chose black tiles since the black reflects about 90% of the heat they're exposed to back into the atmosphere, while the tile's interior absorbs the rest. The interiors radiate absorbed heat so slowly that after landing, the tiles take hours to cool. Those tiles have a hexagonal shape which offers no straight path for hot gas to accelerate through the gaps. In other words, it's an extra measure to prevent the spacecraft from overheating and blowing up upon re-entry. At this point, many people will wonder why the Starship isn't painted white, even though white absorbs the least amount of heat of all the colors in the visible spectrum, helping to keep the rocket as cool as possible. Most rockets, including Falcon Line rockets, are also white. Well, the main reason is very simple cost. With all the above analysis, Starship can withstand the terrible heat created by air friction during atmospheric re-entry. So, it makes sense that if they don't have to paint the rocket white and keep its natural steel color, then they not only save money on paint, but also end up with a lighter rocket since paint is heavy. Falcon 9 is so different, its tanks are made of aluminum lithium alloy, a material made stronger and lighter than aluminum by the addition of lithium. However, compared to stainless steel, aluminum has a lower melting point making it less applicable in high temperature applications. Therefore, coating the Falcon in white is necessary. As for the other rockets out there, the orange insulation is the natural color of the insulating foam, not an orange paint. The first NASA Space Shuttle's main tank was painted white, but later left unpainted to save weight. As for other rockets, the need for paint or insulation is most likely tied to the choice of propellant, supercooled, liquid, hyperbolic, and so forth. Another point is about battery. In 2019, SpaceX unveiled the intention of using battery packs from Tesla in their Starship development efforts, offering a storage capacity of up to 400 kilowatt hours, which is needed to power the electric motors that will actuate Starship's massive control surfaces. The need for all that power is directly related to Starship's methods of re-entry and recovery. One of them is to power Starship's two forward flaps and two aft flaps. Given the enormous size of Starship and the fact that the design of the flaps will eventually need to deal with the forces of re-entry into Earth's atmosphere, the energy needed to keep moving those flaps into the right position, and perhaps to hold them in the right position, could be pretty large. Additionally, Using a Tesla technology battery pack that already can be rapidly recharged can help Starship to be capable of under 24-hour turnaround times. Tesla batteries also have redundant wiring circuits in them which is important for man-rated spacecraft. In short, although being considered to be state-of-the-art, all are still on the paper. In the next launch, SpaceX still has no plans to test the Starship's ability to survive re-entry. However, the second Starship test would unlock the next steps in SpaceX's Starship program. One of them is that the company can start demonstrating refueling Starship in orbit, a major milestone for NASA's Artemis program, which will depend on getting the Starship to the moon to serve as a landing craft for astronauts traveling to the lunar surface. Once SpaceX can establish propellant transfer, it will be time to test whether those designs on the Starship can protect it during its return to Earth. Anyway, everything can be changed, so why not hold out hope for the spacecraft's successful return this time? And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you don't miss any space-important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high-quality content. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.